will betray me. And each one of them began to say, Lord, is it I? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you live and in person Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting of the Last Supper. Jesus had just said, one of you will betray me. And they were all saying to themselves, is it I? Could it be me? Who will it be? Would it be Peter? Would it be Nathaniel? Would it be Simon the Zealot? Would it be James the Less? James, the brother of John. Who would it be? Would it be Thaddeus? Come on, can we give our actors a great hand today? Amen. That's a pretty good-looking bunch of disciples, right? Amen. They're doing an awesome job for us today. All right. So everyone has their photo. You guys can relax now. All right. Let's give them a great big hand today. All right. They're doing a good job. What we want to do today is let you in on the thoughts of these disciples as they ponder this powerful revelation that Jesus had given. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Nathaniel. My name is Nathaniel. Sometimes they call me Bartholomew. I am a disciple of John the Baptist. I am a fisherman. Friend Philip told me they find the Messiah. Where Jesus come from Nazareth. Can any good thing come from Nazareth? Nazareth is a little tiny place. Why would Jesus put his anointing in, in a little tiny place? I saw Jesus. He said, there is in him, there is no guile. Did you know me? Jesus said, I saw you underneath the fig tree. That's where I was before Philip called me. I was underneath the fig tree. In my country, when working mom go to work, they put their babies underneath the fig tree. Jesus was telling me, I know you from the day you were born. I confess my faith. Jesus, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. That time, I followed Jesus. Now he say one of us is going to betray him. And a traitor be among his friends. I hope it's not me. Asking myself, is it I? Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew. Like Zacchaeus, I'm a tax collector. Some people call me Levi, others call me Matthew, the publican. My character changed with fellowship with Jesus, along with my name. He called me when I was in my office collecting taxes, and he said, follow me. And I rose up, and I followed him. Later on that evening, I threw a feast for Jesus and his disciples. And I invited my business partners. And while we were eating, some of the Pharisees, they started complaining. They started saying, who is this man that sits with sinners and publicans? And Jesus, he turned to them and said, those who are well don't need a physician. That's right. Only those who are sick. That day, that day I, I repented. Hmm. And I started following him. And I started reading the scriptures very closely, very, very closely. Until I was finally convinced that Jesus 
fully. Man, the prophecies that were written about the coming Messiah, the Christ, God's anointed. So when I started really, really listening to his sermons, I was like, maybe one day, I, I just hope I get a chance to write a paper so that can prove that he is the Messiah and write the heart of his sermon about the good news, the kingdom of God, a new gospel. Good news. When he first delivered the, that sermon on the side of a mountain in Galilee three years ago, the gospel, the good news for the whole world. Amen. And yet, he just told us that there was some bad news, some tragic news, that someone, that someone was going to betray him. Who is it? Are they going to think me? The once despised tax collector? Could it be me? Is it? Is it really me? Ladies and gentlemen, James the Lesser. My name is James, and since James is a very common name, and I'm short of stature, some people call me James the Lesser. My proper name is James the Son of Alphaeus. I recall the first time I saw the Master. John was baptizing in Jordan. And Jesus came down to be baptized. At first, John refused. But then, when Jesus insisted, he baptized him. Then the Holy Spirit came down from heaven like a dove. The heavens were opened, and a loud voice proclaimed, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. After this, Jesus went about his ministry, healing the sick and performing miracles. Then he chose 12 apostles. I was one of those. And we went with him all throughout Judah and the surrounding area, teaching that the kingdom of God was at hand. But now I heard something extraordinary. Jesus said that one of us would betray him. How could that be? We have walked with him and talked with him. Then I asked, could it be me? Is it I? Ladies and gentlemen, James. I am James, the brother of John. Some time ago, I started following Jesus with my brother. When he called on us to follow him while we were mending our nets by the Sea of Galilee with our father, Zebedee, about a day, almost three years ago, right now. We were just very humbled to know that he had picked us out to be his disciples. And even more so, when he found out, when we found out that he also wanted for us to be among the 12 apostles. My mother, Salome, who was very ambitious, she immediately pressed us to make claims with Jesus. So on the way to Jerusalem, we asked him, Lord, can we be on your right 
and on your left, sitting down, when you come into your kingdom, to which the Lord replied, you do not know what you're asking. And so he continued saying, can you take the cup that I am going to take and the baptism that I am going to take? And we replied, Lord, we are able. After that, he said, you will take of the cup that I am taking and of the same baptism, but it is not my privilege nor authority to give you those positions in my kingdom. Furthermore, the person who wants to be greater and above all, he will be the last. The first shall be the last, and he must be the servant of all. And with that, Jesus demonstrated his words by washing the disciples' feet before supper. But throughout the dinner, what was on my mind was the question, how could anyone turn someone over who had showed them the way of love? Who could do that? How could anyone have it in their heart to turn someone over like that? And so all I could hear in my heart during that, e that dinner was, Lord, is it I? Is it I? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew. I am Andrew, brother to Simon Peter, and the man that first brought his own brother before the Lord. I'm just an ordinary person, nothing special. Um, I'm very typical, just like any of you. Now, I've done the best that I've, I can, the best that I have could, with the gifts and talents that God has, has given me to best serve the master. The others, they call me Andrew the Bringer because it seems that I bring everybody else before Jesus. I brought my brother Paul to Jesus and have gloried in the transformation in his life. I found the little lad that had five loaves and two fish that day that Jesus fed the 5,000. Just recently, some Greeks were seeking the master. So once again, my services were called upon. So I brought the Greeks to Jesus. He must have seen something special in me, something of value, something that others didn't see. Because he made me one of the 12 apostles. I've been close with him ever since. <clears throat> His closeness means so much. It's something that, that I've cherished. Now, I'm not necessarily part of the inner circle like Peter but I'm definitely not in his outer circle. I've been a friend and companion to the Lord. You know, it's pretty amazing. What better gift could life afford a fisherman? But now one of us is to betray him. Who could it be? Who could do that in their heart? Who could accept that? Could it be Andrew the bringer? Could it be I? Could it be I? Ladies and gentlemen, Judas. Judas. 